Honestly, stop trying to build AI apps with tools like Lovable, Replit, or Zite. You're wasting your time and probably burning a bunch of AI tokens on builders that weren't designed for your internal business tools. They give you a blank canvas and then leave you to figure out the rest, the complex backend, the data connections, and the security, which is why 90% of these projects ultimately fail. But after building over 150 automations for my clients, I try to only use systems that are built for a specific purpose. So this is Data Button. It's designed for building internal AI apps that actually drive your productivity. We're gonna build a LinkedIn post generator right now to show you why it's better than the alternatives. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Simon. This channel is where we stop wrestling with spreadsheets and build automated systems that help reclaim your time. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you like and subscribe. Now let's jump into building the app. Okay, so this is gonna sound a bit backwards, but stick with me here. These AI builders keep adding more and more features, more flexibility, more power, and you're kind of left a little bit frozen because when you've got infinite possibilities and a blank screen with just a chat interface, you end up spending half a week or the weekend just deciding what framework to use, what tech stack. And there's actually a psychology term to this. It's called the tyranny of choice. But here's the thing though, what if building faster is not about having every single option available and a blank canvas? What if it's about having less? That is the insight that Data Button had that everyone else seems to have missed in this space. This video is sponsored by Data Button, but I genuinely believe every word I'm saying here as I'm showing you these templates. So you can see all of these different categories here. We've got sales, finance, marketing, and the way this is designed is that actually you can just take one of these templates and plug and play it into your use case and actually still have that cool chat interface like Lovable, like Replit, to actually build on top of what already exists. But it also comes with one main advantage, which is actually, if we're using these templates, we already know that it has security built into it. So let's jump into the LinkedIn post creator, which is actually one of those templates already built. So it's dra about drafting LinkedIn posts from ideas and prompts using AI. So if we hit start building, once you've signed up to an account with Data Button, it will start building out your app. So it's got this interface where it will actually load up the app and then you can start to see exactly what the interface is gonna look like and then we can edit and make changes using the chat interface from there. So it's still completely no code, but gives us that framework to start with. And also a little bit of insight that's something I learned after building over 150 automations. The gap between the beginners and the experts is usually not what you think. It's actually having the right framework. You can skip learning the deep parts and just focus on the 20% that actually matters. So you can essentially skip most of the learning club. And I know that sounds too good to be true. So let me just show you exactly what I mean with this post generator. We're going to generate a LinkedIn post generator now that would traditionally take me several hours, even up to a day in Lovable. And you're gonna see we achieve similar results in less than 10 minutes here. So let's go through the important parts on the screen here. On the left-hand side, if you've done any coding before, you'll probably recognize that we've got a bunch of pages or files that correspond to the actual backend code, but we don't need to worry about changing the code because the AI is gonna do that for us. It's spun up a completely unique template inside here. So every time you click on a template, it's actually gonna design it from scratch, but it's gonna follow the same base principle. So this is called Spark Post AI. Turn your ideas into ready to publish LinkedIn posts. So we can actually insert our ideas here. We can give it a different tone and then we're able to generate a post. But what it has on the right hand side is like a conversation window that says, actually, we need to complete a few tasks. The first is create an API to generate the LinkedIn post. So right now it's probably just an interface and there's no actual backend API. The second task is connect the UI to the post generation API. So making sure that our posts appear in this preview box. And the fourth one or third one is plan next development steps together. So it's kind of guiding me through that process. So if I try and actually generate a post here, it probably won't preview here because it's just an interface, but let's try. So it has generated and it has previewed. So it's done exactly what we asked for. It's put the title at the top and then it says, every challenge is an opportunity in disguise. I've learned that success comes from taking action, staying curious and never giving up what matters. What's the one thing you're taking action on today? So it's not a particularly good LinkedIn post and that's because the prompt 
will not be very good at the moment and not very defined. We can see that it's built out one page, which is the home page, and then we've got no APIs actually generating that post. So I'm not sure how at the moment it's actually generating that and whether it's even using a AI to do so. So what we're gonna do is ask it to actually continue with what it thinks, which is starting with task two. You can hover over any of these and it will tell us exactly what it means. Create a new fast API endpoint that will take a user's idea and use the open AI API. And we can open that and we can actually even start the task directly from here. So it's gonna go ahead and we have a chat interface and it tells us exactly what's happening as we go along. It's asked us for our OpenAI API key. So we're gonna generate a new secret key there. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it in this confidential credential window here and we're gonna send it back and that's gonna save our secret value in the back end. So we don't have to worry about the security here. And what I love about this is it started extremely basic. It's not gone the full hog and created like 10 different pages with lots of different functionality that we have to rework. And you'll probably know that rework is often gonna take you longer than just starting with a framework. It's actually just given us the base level to work from. It also gives us status updates as it goes along and it acts like we are managing it rather than just going off and doing its own thing. So we can mark task two as done. It's saying it's actually done that now and it's checking everything as it goes along. So things will more likely work than bug out. It's gonna move on to task three now, which is actually putting everything back into the preview window on the user interface. And it's even told us it currently uses placeholder logic to simulate the post generation. So that explains why we actually had a post preview there. So what we can see down here is in the APIs, we've got this post generator, some Python code, and we can see it's actually calling out to the OpenAI API. So it says here that we've got the system prompt. You're an expert LinkedIn content creator. Your task is to take the user's ideas and transform it into professional, engaging, and ready to publish LinkedIn posts. And then you can see it's dynamically passing in our idea into the user prompt. Generate a LinkedIn post from the following idea, and then it's pulled the idea through. So we know the logic that's going on and we can actually put in our own prompt inside here or probably just ask it to actually change the prompt. But if we go back to the home page and we test this out, AI in the workplace, generate post. It's even got this loading form for us. It's gonna go out, call that API and then return and hopefully display in the preview window our full LinkedIn post. So how quick was that? Super quick to spin up a template and actually make changes. I know if you've used Lovable before that this can be extremely painful because it actually won't understand your instructions half the time. It seems to be significantly better here. And it's suggested, okay, how can we make this even more useful? Should we add an editing feature that would allow us to tweak the generated text directly? So right now we can't tweak it. Should we add a history of saved posts? to keep track of the content. So I'll say, yes, let's add an editing feature and a history of saved posts. I'll ask it to complete all actions and then we'll send that. And in general, the pricing, by the way, is significantly simplified. So it's a credit system. If we go to the pricing page, we get 75 credits for $20 a month. And with the affiliate link in the description, you'll be able to get 23 credits to test this out. And generally the 75 credits correspond to 75 back and forth actions with the AI here. And that's not the AI usage to actually generate the ideas. That obviously comes from your OpenAI key as well. So you can see a live log of the credits down here. I've got four credits left. I started with, I think, 15 to 20, and I've built two apps or nearly two apps with these. So it's now creating tasks and that's not costing us any credits here. It's actually the build work that's gonna cost us credits. So we're not paying for that back and forth but it gives us the extra clarity on what exactly is gonna happen. So now it's starting on task five, which is about setting up a database for the post so that we can display that historical post usage. We have complete control, like we do when we're supervising something to actually delete the task, mark as done, pause, whatever we want as we go through this. So you can actually stop actions from taking place. And if we actually test it first by using AI in the workplace, let's generate a post and let's see if it now appears in our post history. And you can also see that it hasn't needed to actually create new pages and make this a really complex app. Because it's a simple idea, we've got our idea, the editor inside here where we can now actually make edits. So if I just delete that, we can make edits. 
we can copy the post directly. So it's understood that we might wanna just take it to our platform of choice because right now we haven't integrated it with our platform of choice. But actually we can also just save that post. And now you can see in the post history, it saved the post with the idea and we can directly click in here and actually make edits there. And you're probably expecting me to be like, this is the best app in the world. It's obviously not the best app in the world, but the point of this is you can spin up things so, so quickly, much quicker than a lot of the competitors out there. We'll save that next post and then let's deploy our app to show you how simple it is to actually start the deployment, identify any security issues and then deploy the app on a live site that we can go and then use. And none of this deployment, etc., costs you any credits. It's just those successful code builds. This is the second time I've used Data Button, and I can tell you it's super intuitive. I've not had to go to any tutorials to understand how to use it, which means it's super accessible for everyone. And it's saying now it's successfully deployed the app and it will take us to the app. So test apps, simonscrapes.databutton.app, so we can obviously change the domain it's registered to, but we now have a post generator that's live on the web as quick as that. The prompt needs refining, the outputs are rubbish, but the app interface and the fact it's deployed with no security issues was incredibly quick. So we'll generate one about the future of data button. It's gonna take a couple of seconds and then it's gonna throw our post onto the screen. We can edit it, we can save it, and that will appear down in our post history. Very neat. Okay, so you know how some tech just becomes completely essential, like email after the late 90s, Slack in 2016, now every workplace uses Slack. I think Data Button is about to get there because actually they are simplifying the way in which you can build websites. They give you a framework to do so very, very quickly and very, very simply, no learning required. Plus, they're actually building out some new updates which will allow you to plug straight into HubSpot, Mixpanel, GA4, and all of your data sources. So actually, instead of just building these out from scratch, you'll be able to plug into those data sources that you already use to build internal apps. And that's the shift that's gonna happen in the future. It's like when building tools goes from this whole thing you need to plan out and do loads of steps and understand the logic to something that just happens and you supervise it as it happens. Let me know your thoughts after trying Data Button in the comments and whether you think it competes or will compete with something like Lovable, Replit or Zite. Thanks for watching.